Hey guys, we're going to read a book today and then we're going to do an activity with it another day, okay? So I'm thinking that during these times when we're all kind of stuck at home with the family or really we're safe at home with the family, um, maybe we're getting a little tired of each other every once in a while. So I thought we'd read this book and learn something from it and we all love the stories by the Berenstain Bears. This is the Berenstain Bears and the Trouble with Grown-Ups. Oh, what could we learn from this? By Stan and Jan Berenstain. Even though it was bright and clear outside, the Bear family's treehouse, there was a storm brewing inside. For, a while, for while it would be wrong to say that cups and grown-ups are natural enemies, it would be fair to say that cups and grown-ups sometimes don't get along. Where's the rest of my paper? thundered an angry Papa Bear, storming into the living room. It didn't take him long to find Brother Bear in the sports section. I just borrowed it, said Brother. Papa snatched it up and plopped down in his easy chair. Brother wandered into the kitchen looking for sympathy from Mama Bear. Gee, he said, what's eating him? Your father looks forward to his evening paper, Mama said, and he has a perfect right to be annoyed when half of it is missing. And furthermore, I'll thank you not to refer to your father as him. She stomped out of the kitchen. Why not? He's a him, isn't he? Gosh, said brother, what's eating her? What was eating mama was Sister Bear. Sister had been on the phone with Lizzie Bruin for almost an hour. But mama, she protested when she was told to say goodbye. Don't but mama me, said Mama Bear. This is not your private phone. You've had all day to talk to Lizzie at school, and you'll have all day to talk to her tomorrow. So hang up that phone now. Sister did as she was told. Later at dinner, brother and sister got into a little more trouble. Peas and mashed potatoes again, said brother under his breath. And what? Papa asked, is wrong with peas and mashed potatoes? Brother was about to answer that. They'd had them three days in a row, but he thought better of it. Instead, he began counting and spearing peas onto his fork. One, two, three, four. What are you doing, asked Sis. Trying to see how many peas I can get onto my fork at one time, he answered. While brother was counting peas, sister was working on her mashed potatoes. She patted them into a little mountain, and then using her spoon, she pressed a cup in the top. Pour it right there, she said when Mama offered her gravy. What in the world, commented Mama. Well, you see, said sister, it's a volcano, and the gravy is going to be the lava and flow down the sides. That will be quite enough of volcanoes and counting peas, shouted Mama. Food is not to play with, it's to eat. Gee whiz, said brother, we're just trying to make it interesting. Food isn't supposed to be interesting, roared Papa. It's supposed to be food. Brother and sister went to bed that night and got up the next morning without much fuss. But trouble started again at breakfast. Oh, yes, brother said, suddenly remembering something. We'll be getting the late bus home this afternoon because... Late bus? Interrupted mom. I was planning on our visiting Green after school. But mama, he protested, we're staying late to plan for the parents' night talent show next Friday. Parents' night, she said. First I heard of it. 
And Friday is my chest night with Farmer Ben, complained Papa. Here's a notice I brought home, said Sis, digging into her bag. I forgot to give it to you. Me too, muttered Brother. Why, this notice is a week old, said Mama. Forgot? Forgot? roared Papa. Why, you cubs would forget your heads if they weren't attached to your shoulders. Phew, breathed Brother as he fell into the seat beside Cousin Fred on the school bus. Tough morning, asked Fred. You better believe it, said Sister, taking the seat Lizzie had saved for her. The four compared notes on the way to school. The cubs agreed that while there was no doubt that their parents loved them, they were a little difficult to get along with sometimes. They nagged, they said no a lot, and they never wanted cubs to have any fun. Hey, said brother as they got off the bus, what are we going to do for the parents' night talent show? Don't know, said Lizzie. Let's think about it. This, that afternoon, the auditorium was filled with cubs getting ready for the show. Babs Bruno was playing her violin. Queenie McBear was practicing pirouettes. Too tall and his gang were working on a rap number which teacher Bob didn't look too happy about. Brother, sis, Fred, and Lizzie didn't have an idea yet. But as they searched their brains, brother snapped his fingers and said, I've got it. Remember what we were talking about on the bus this morning? Sure, said Fred. We were saying how grown-ups can be a big pain. Well, said brother, let's put on a play about that and call it The Trouble with Grown-Ups, shouted all the others. Sensational, said sister as they slapped hands delighted with the idea of showing parents how hard it is being a cub. But putting on a play is easier said than done. You have to write it, figure out who is going to play the parts, then memorize it. Then you have to worry about costumes and scenery. The Cubs did all that. It was hard, but it was fun, and they did it all in secret. Costumes for Fred and Lizzie were easy. They were going to be brother and sister, so they just borrowed their extra clothes. Getting costumes for brother and sister wasn't so simple, because they would be playing their own mama and papa. They managed by letting Gran in on the secret. She was a wizard on the sewing machine and she made them great looking mama and papa costumes. The four practiced their parts and before they knew it, it was time for the Big Parents Night talent show. There was a lot of talent at the Bear Country School, and all the acts did pretty well. But it was brother, sister, Fred, and Lizzie's play that was the hit of the show. I'm Papa Bear, and I'm going to relax in my easy chair after a hard day and read my paper. Yipe! Somebody stole my sports page. Help! Murder! Police! Somebody stole my sports page! Here it is, Papa. I didn't steal it. I just borrowed it. It's disgraceful. That's what it is. Cubs have it too easy today. They have everything handed to them. I used to walk 20 miles to school in blinding snowstorms. But, Papa... Don't, but Papa, act two. Ring, hello, hi Lizzie. Sister Bear, get off that phone. I'm expecting a very important call. Who from? Who from, who from? How am I supposed to know who from? But Mama, don't Mama me. 
the audience of parents laughed and laughed when they saw how they had seemed to their cubs. Mama laughed until tears rolled down her cheeks. Papa laughed too, but not as much as Mama. They both thought the play, which was a big surprise to them, was very well done. They admitted that it helped them understand what it was like being a cub. The next morning, Mama and Papa had a bit of a surprise for their cubs. You might even say a shock. Mama, who was sewing wizard her, who was a sewing wizard herself, had made a grown-up size pink jumper. Wearing it, she looked like a huge sister bear. She even had a pink bow. Papa, wearing a red pajama top and blue bottoms, looked like a gigantic brother bear. The cubs were confused. It's very simple, explained Mama. You helped us understand what it's like being cubs by pretending we're the cubs and you're the grown-ups. We're going to show you what it's like being parents. Before brother and sister could say a word, Mama and Papa began acting like cubs. Where's breakfast? I'm hungry, shouted Papa. I hope we're not having that gooey oatmeal again, screamed Mama. Ooey gooey oatmeal. Ooey gooey oatmeal, shouted Papa, jumping up and down. Brother pulled sister into the living room where they could hear themselves talk. But the living room was another shock. There were things all over the floor, not toys, which they sometimes left lying about, but strange things like a vacuum cleaner, Mama's sewing basket, Papa's chainsaw, and his wrench set. What a mess! The cubs understood. Mama and Papa were showing them what it was like having to pick up after them. Mama and Papa ran through the mess and headed for the front door. Brother cried, Please don't bang the... But it was too late. Papa, Papa banged the door so hard it shook the house. Brother began to smile. Sister began to giggle. They went out on the stoop. There were cubs, Mama and Papa, sporting about on the lawn. Mama jumping rope. Papa trying kick turns on Brother's skateboard. <clears throat> but their feet got tangled, and they sprawled head over heels on the grass. Pretty soon, they were all laughing so hard, their sides ached. Later, when they were back to being themselves, Papa said, I have a better idea how cubs feel now. Mama agreed. Brother and sister admitted they had a better idea how parents feel too. Boy, said brother, you too sure know how to act like cubs. After all, we were cubs once ourselves, said Mama. And here's a thought. You'll be grown-ups someday and each probably have cubs of your own. Brother and sister thought about that for a moment. They looked at each other. Then they looked off into the distance and thought about it. It was something to think about. That story leaves you something to think about, too. How are you treating your parents? Are you following the rules like a good citizen? Are you doing what they ask you to do without complaining? Are you cleaning up after yourselves? We're all at home all day, every day these days, and I want you to think about that. We're going to have a project later to go along with this story. I hope you guys are doing well. Make sure and listen and obey your parents and be that good citizen and that good um, role model for brothers and sisters at home. I'll see you guys later. Bye.